Of course, every American has a unique identity. I am proud to be gay. I am proud to be a Republican. But most of all, I am proud to be an American. One billionaire to another. My grandfather Peter said Thiel, the most supporting Donald Trump in, in remarks that really are important uh, because that's the only for way the Republican really Party. Joining me now to discuss it, Mo Ali, former Democratic ambitious, National Committee spokesperson, and Guy he Benson, who's political and editor at townhall.com. Great to see you both. So, Guy, you are Moses. an openly gay Republican. My carried that <laughs> that's right? a thing. That, uh, right, it's a thing. <laughs> yeah. And so is he. Yeah. Discuss the significance of what just happened here. Look, I'm proud of what he just did on a personal level, and I have to tip my cap to the Trump campaign for welcoming that message here at the convention. And it should be said you are not a Trump fan. I'm not. So? Uh, but this was important for the party. And what we just saw was Peter Thiel say, I am proud to be gay. The applause began. I am proud, proud to be a Republican. The applause built. But most importantly, I'm proud to be an American. A crescendo, a standing ovation. Um, that is from the rostrum of the Republican National Committee, I think, a big moment. Um, but I think also what's important is to note, Peter Thiel was not invited to speak here because he's gay. Peter Thiel is an extraordinary person an innovator. He's brilliant. That's why he's here. He happens to be gay. And the warm welcome that he got was exciting. And you know what? I think it was appropriate that he also went out of his way briefly to distance himself from certain elements of the recently adopted platform that, in my view, ranged from disappointing to disgraceful. He made that point. What he said specifically? I, well, I don't want to necessarily get into all the specifics of it, but I think some of it, the party platform probably should not be addressing conversion therapy, for example. That's, that's ludicrous. And I think that there are plenty of gay conservatives who recognize there are lots of people in America and in the Republican Party and in the conservative movement who have different views on, for example, marriage equality. A lot of people are for traditional marriage. They are not, by definition, bigots or mean-spirited, and we should welcome debates within the party because the country is changing. This was a small step, but an important one in the right direction to improving our conversation about these issues as a conservative movement. How about this, Mo? Because typically we've seen in the past the Democrats really use the the issue of gay rights against Republicans. Donald Trump has not has not been somebody who it, it comes out against gay rights or bashes the gay community. You saw all of his family on their feet cheering him when he said, "I'm gay and I'm Republican. I'm American." Is has has. Trump disarmed the Democrats on this issue. Well, I don't think entirely. I think, you know, to Guy's point, what was in the, the platform of the Republican Party, of Trump's Republican Party, is still the official position of the Republican Party. It is what most Republican candidates are advocating. And so I think Democrats are going to continue to make the contrast. What I think was remarkable, I th and I agree with you 100 percent, that what Peter did up there was remarkable for a Republican convention and was a good sign in a week that has not had a lot of good signs. It was one of the very few moments where a speaker tried to reach out beyond the Republican base in a week where there was very few speakers trying to reach out beyond the Republican base. Tonight is all about that, though. If you look at the preview we've gotten of his speech, of Ivanka's speech, of Donald Trump's speech, it is all about, you tell me, uh, reaching out beyond the Republican base, guys. Yeah, and I think what we just saw here, when I saw the advanced script of what Peter Thiel was going to say, I said, all right, let's see how this building responds. We've seen boos and catcalls in various contexts here. This was unequivocal. This was an embrace of Peter Thiel, which was pretty cool to see. Yep. And, you know, Donald Trump, with whom I have wow. numerous disagreements and still do, looking at his speech in advance, he is going to go out of his way to condemn what happened in Orlando, specifically talking about the fact that the LGBT community was targeted, and we want to protect that community. He's going to say that in his acceptance speech, and that's an important thing as well. well a, quickly, Mo, and I want to ask you before we go, how do you grade the convention so far? Oh, I think this convention has been an unmitigated disaster for the Republican Party. I really do. I think this has been a party that has been uh, full of division, have uh, intra-party squabbling, of 
of candidates who have, or of speakers who have uh, sought to divide more than unite. You think that next week it's going to be all about uniting and no, no here, division in, in Philly? Difference. Here's going to be the big difference. I think that next week the signal coming out of the DNC is that a lot of the candidates are going to they'll hit Donald Trump, but they're going to try to make a forceful case for Hillary Clinton. <laughs> there have not been a lot of candidate era speakers here who have actually children, given, his other children than his have, children, yeah. other than the people who shared his last name or share the ballot with him, his running mate did it. You don't hear a lot of people making a forceful case for Donald Trump from this stage. Great to see you both. Thank you for being here.